What's happening, Heartscapers? This is episode 193 of the How to Heartscape podcast, where we talk about how you can start and grow your hardscaping business. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about the How to Hardscape headquarters software that you can implement into your business. And I'm bringing this up because it is a timely subject. Prices will increase as we roll out onboarding in the following weeks here. So I want to get into what the software could do for your business, as well as things that you can be measuring in your business to improve certain processes or other processes that can be automated using a certain software. So I want to get into the bigger picture of this software software and what we're looking at one year down the road, two years down the road, and so on. But if you need bookkeeping, accounting, CFO services, reach out to CycleCPA at CycleCPA.com or Cycle underscore CPA on Instagram. Love to know how to Hardscape sent you for $200 off and we'll talk more about them in later in today's episode. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode. So if you've been following along with How to Hardscape for some time now, we actually started back in the beginning of 2019 with a website. And with that website, I rolled out a spreadsheet, which allowed users to create a budget and estimate from that budget. In about once a year, I talk about budgeting in general on this podcast, just me and myself sitting down and going through the different steps and what budgeting can help you do in your business and to recoup your overhead, your material cost, your, your labor, and ensure that you're making profit on every single project. What we did with that software over the next few years after rolling it out was we improved upon it as much as we could and we rolled it out to those that actually purchased the software or the spreadsheet, I mean. So with that, we started to bring on certain features like automated forms. So whatever materials you brought into the estimate, an automated form would give you a line item list of that actual material cost. Same thing with creating a purchase order. It would give you a rundown of the materials that you would need to purchase. And you could send that right off to a vendor to get that purchase order started. And then a work order form for somebody like the foreman to be able to track the amount of hours that are going into each of your production rates. So with that spreadsheet, we hit a wall where if we were to continue to improve upon that spreadsheet, it would become extremely inefficient and really messy with the new features that we wanted to roll out. So with that being said, I pursued creating a software from that spreadsheet. And that's where the How to Hardscape headquarters really fits in here. So I wanted to take everything that I've put into and developed in that spreadsheet and create a software from it so that we could really streamline these different processes in your business to ensure that we are creating a budget that's going to make back all of our money and then some to ensure that we are creating a successful hardscaping business. Now, in that time that we've been in development, I've learned a lot in terms of creating a user friendly experience, as well as the amount of things that we could do with the software in the future. And all of that I'm going to get into in today's episode and what the future could look like for this spreadsheet. I'm going to be giving away all of the things that I want to be accomplishing with this spreadsheet, putting it all on the table. So if any other software company, or if you're using a different software, I don't recommend actually changing softwares. Once you've put in the time to put in all your data and get everything uh, right in the right place, I don't recommend changing softwares, but if it is something that you do want to pursue, reach out to me. We'll make that as seamless as possible, that transition over from another software company. But still, at the end of the day, you should be evaluating what these different softwares can do for you in your business and see if it fits within your business and not have a, say, price model predict or dictate which software company that you're going to. I would recommend choosing the right software company that fits within your business model and then using your time to develop that software to do what's right for you. Because at the end of the day, the software is only as powerful as the data that you actually put into it. I just want to take a break from today's episode to talk about our sponsor, Cycle CPA. You may have a CRM or project management software in place, but what data are you using to ensure your estimating is accurate? Having a proper accounting setup and accurate bookkeeping done is key to understanding overhead expenses and other costs that must be recouped in your estimates. Cycle CPA is a remote bookkeeping and CFO firm that helps to connect the dots from the financial reports to the hardscape and landscape data needed in order to reach high profits. 
They provide landscape and hardscape industry benchmarking, job costing, financials by service line, advisory meetings, and much more. Cycle CPA's team of accountants are specialized within the hardscape and landscape industry, and you can visit them at CycleCPA.com and for $200 off, mention the How to Hardscape podcast. Now back to our episode. So with that being said, we have multiple phases rolling out with this software in this first phase, which we will be onboarding people shortly here. If you are a part of the members only platform, which this is where it's going to be housed, you will get an email on your onboarding and we will work with you on that in groups. We will not be doing individual unless absolutely necessary. We will be doing groups for our onboarding. We are going to be taking a different model than other software companies are doing, say, for their onboarding. We won't be charging for our onboarding, but because we're not charging, we will be doing groups. And additionally, with that onboarding, we will go through the entire software and help you get set up in that week of onboarding, as well as we will have course material on every step of the software available for you to review on your own time and whenever you want to. We've worked really hard to make this a very user-friendly software so you can kind of take a look at it and get a good grasp of how things work. There are a few things that you will want to probably get clarification on. That's where the onboarding is going to help and that's where the course material is also going to help as well. Right out of the box, when we do release this, it's going to include a, a lot to get you started with and then we're going to continuously improve and roll out phases that I've got planned and I'll get into those phases as well in this episode but right off the bat we have a dashboard that you can see a lot of your analytics for certain budgets and where uh, the different expenses are being tied to whether equipment labor or business expenses as well as estimated projects the number of them the dollar value amount and total approved projects the number of them the dollar amount and we'll have actually more statistics rolled out in the future for the dashboard as well as dashboards for each of certain aspects in your business. For example, employees, your CRM, projects, and each of these will kind of have their own dashboard to be able to break down specific analytics for each of those. We have a setup tab that allows you to put your company information in so that when you create a proposal, all of that information is drawn from your company information so that you don't have to keep on typing those in time and time again. We have email templates, which I will actually be putting my personal email templates into that you you can either edit or you can actually create your own email templates from scratch. These are email templates that would go out for scheduling a consultation, email templates for sending out a proposal, and so on. So email templates will be a thing for this as well as cost codes, units of measurement, which will already be added for you by default so that you can edit them or you can add new ones as well. I'm going to be using my information from my own business that you will have defaults for for a lot of these for example not the actual production rates but production categories so that when you are actually creating an estimate you can choose pavers and it'll bring up all of the different production rate categories that you can then add your production rates into so a lot of the things that go into creating your own customization within the software will be done for you. It'll just be a matter of adding in your own data, which will be a crucial part for that. You can also add users as well and decide which aspects of the software that they can have access into. For example, you may not want to add access to employee information for some users, so you would restrict that or if it is just for time tracking purposes, you can just have them only be able to access that time tracking, whatever that might be for cer certain users. And then we get into actually creating a budget, which is much like our software, where you're gonna add up your equipment costs, you're gonna add up your business expenses or overhead expenses, you're gonna get into adding overtime for employees and just evaluating what your budget looks like in total. But that's gonna allow you to actually estimate from certain budgets. We have an employees tab which you can add certain employees and then you can separate them into certain crews so you can add employees to a specific crew so that when you are actually estimating you don't have to add single employees to that estimate you can just add a specific 
crew, and then even add an individual employee to that specific estimate as well. Now, adding those employees to a project would be specific to labor producing employees because non labor producing employees like admin staff, they would be treated more so as an overhead expense. And then, like I said, production rates, we get into that because that's what's going to actually help you come up with a quote based on the amount of time it takes you for certain aspects of a project, separating those aspects of a project between things like excavation, base preparation, screening, laying, jointing compound, whatever that might look like for you that you would break down in your business. This is where a lot of the customization of the estimation process actually does break down. I wouldn't recommend quoting by a square foot price but there are ways that we can use the software to give you a square foot price to if you're wanting to create a quote from a specific square foot price. We have materials with a material catalog and within that material catalog you can add links to a specific material and you can also add a vendor where you would purchase this material from and this is where the automation and this is where the automation process really helps because if you are creating a quote with a specific material you can create purchase orders for those materials based on the vendors for that material for example if you get your pavers all from one vendor and that's added into the material catalog you can actually create a purchase order and all of the materials from that estimate for that specific vendor will be automatically created for a purchase order to send to that vendor. Then with that same estimate, if you have things like soil mulch and that comes from a different vendor, it'll automatically create a purchase order for that specific vendor. So all of that automation process of creating an estimate and sending out purchase orders to your certain vendors is completely automated. And where the links fit in is at the end when you've created your proposal, links will be automatically added to those materials so that a client can actually go into the proposal and click on those links to be actually drawn to a certain landing page for that product so that they can learn more about that product. We have a basic CRM right now and it's going to be added onto in future phases to include a lot of different things and to automate a lot of different things. Things like client status that include lead consultation if it's a proposal that has been sent or if that client has been approved different notes from jobs for that client or different points of contact with that client, whether that's email, phone call, and notes to go along with that. You'll be able to tag clients with certain demographics and that's gonna help. Uh, we'll get into that shortly, closer to the end of this episode. We'll also be able to tag them by what work they get done, whether it's like maintenance or it's a install project, hardscape, whatever services that client is actually after in your business. And the more data that you can input into this, the better, especially with tags for demographics. And then finally, we get into creating an actual project, which allows you to automatically choose a client, all of their information pops up, and then to be able to go through step-by-step step the labor time that goes into it, who's assigned to this project in terms of the actual crew that's gonna be on the project, how many hours are gonna go into each of these steps of the process of installing the project and who's going to get the man hours for that as well as the material that's going to go into that and then we get an automated form based on this whether you do line item pricing work area pricing both of those are going to be in there for certain forms that you can send off to the client and they'll actually be able to sign on the document digitally and send that back to you through the software we will have the ability to also send them a contract added into that so you can create a contract template for certain installation for maintenance whatever that might look like so that you can add that on to the actual proposal and send that off to them so that they get the proposal as well as your say terms and conditions or the contract to go along with that so they know exactly what's going to be included into that a cool thing about the work area proposal is that whatever information you include in the production rates will actually automatically be populated in that. So when you're creating a production rate for say pavers, you can have an area where you add in text that goes into what your specific company does for installing pavers. So you can detail out your process from excavation, base preparation, screening, laying, whatever that might look like for that specific production rate. 
so that when you do create this automated proposal for that, your entire process will show up and that'll allow your client to see your exact process, what goes into the project so that they can compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges if they're looking at other contractors for a specific project. The more detailed you can be with your work area proposals, the better it looks like for your company. If we can automate that, the best it can be for you and for getting a proposal out to a client as fast as possible, as well as a lot of information in that proposal so the client knows exactly what they're getting. And then we have a job costing area and right now it is a manual job costing to be able to compare what your estimated project looks like compared to the actual numbers after a project is completed. But we are going to be rolling out in the next phase time sheets, time tracking so that we can automate this process of job costing. So right now job costing is manual. It will be fully automated when we roll out time sheets and time tracking so that we can take hours from a project that has been clocked into and you can actually just compare automated what those hours are looking like each step of the process and also within that your foreman will also be able to log hours for production rates so for example if our production rate is broken down by excavation and they can see what the production rate for excavation was and they can clock in and clock out of that excavation so that you can actually compare what your production rates are to what they actually are being in the field and your foreman can add notes to that to say on this project we experience a setback of this which may cause our production rate to be off or that foreman can say this is what our production rate would actually look like in the field it seems that our office production rate may be off this may be something that we need to look at in the future I've talked about a few things throughout this so far that we are going to be including in future phases like that time tracking time sheets we're gonna have an app developed for this as well we're gonna have a lot more breaking down of your actual numbers so beyond just knowing your numbers and saying that as overhead expenses and being able to recoup your numbers we're going to be getting really fine with our numbers in terms of things like closing rates in terms of our demographics and where our leads are coming from and where we can allocate marketing dollars to be able to capitalize on that leads so much more in just knowing your numbers from overhead expenses to expanding that to be able to create a well-oiled machine where the software can actually based on certain benchmarks be able to create suggestions for you in your business to be able to point you in the right direction if you're possibly missing things. For example, pulling off that closing rate, we can compare your closing rate from this year compared to last year if that data is actually available. And the closing rate here is automated based on the amount of proposals sent out and come back approved. But we can get into closing rate by lead source to allow you to see which platforms are providing the best leads for you. Maybe you can improve on those lead sources in your ads based on those that are falling behind on a closing rate. Or you can double down on those lead sources coming from your your highest closing rate you can see where you were last year with your closing rate at say the spring rush time and see if you're falling behind if you're lower in your closing rate and you need to improve something based on that falling behind in the closing rate whether that's your pricing structure, maybe the market has become a little bit more difficult to land work, so you need to adjust your pricing to that market, or maybe your closing rate is too high and you need to increase your pricing to be able to adjust for that demand that's coming into the market and wanting to sign up for your services. You can also see the sales rate, closing rate for salespeople and be able to decide who's hitting certain benchmarks or be able to see demographics of that salesperson where they perform best. So that when you have a sales lead come into your business, you're able to decide what demographic that person is and assign a salesperson to that specific lead based on the data that you have for that salesperson. So for example, say they do better with a 55 plus audience 
and you can assign that salesperson to a lead that you know is in a specific retirement area or you can create a zoom call or a phone call with that client to be able to decide what demographics they may fit in to decide the salesperson that you want to assign to that specific project that can also be broken down by area the salesperson that does better in one area as opposed to another and so on all that demographics will be pulled from your crm which is in further development where you can actually choose certain demographics to assign to a client based on who they are and what information you're able to get out of them in that lead generation process. You can also further create ads from those demographics. So one of the more difficult things that you can do in a say Facebook ad strategy or Google ad strategy is choosing the correct demographics. And based on say your closing rates or any data that we can attribute to certain clients in your CRM, we can create demographics that would work best in your ad targeting. And all of these things are suggestions that we can create through the software based on the data that you input into the software. We can see how crews are doing with specific benchmarks that we set for them. We can see how employees are doing with benchmarks set for them as well. One thing that I've really wanted to work on with this software, which is coming in the future, is creating some sort of incentive program for ongoing education for employees or creating a very structured company to allow employees to see where they can be next year, the year after, years down the road, to give them a career path within the company and to set different branches within that career path based on where they wanna see their career develop. This is actually something that I've gotten feedback from previous employees that I haven't actually been good at delegating I haven't been good at training on the job site in a clear and cohesive way where they wish that they coming on to their first day had a little bit of background knowledge on what we were going to be getting into. So with that, with the members only platform, we've got courses on training your employees with certain aspects of the design build process. So you can actually assign these courses in the future on the software, assign courses to specific employees, especially in the onboarding process. Maybe you wanna assign a light course on what we're gonna be getting into in the first day on your project, or just in general, what the interlocking concrete pavement process construction looks like. So you can assign that to them before they show up on their first day. They've already got that completed so that they've already got a little bit of background knowledge on what they're going to get into. Maybe they understand a little bit more about the tools. So if you ask them to go get a tool, they can actually go get it or they can just remember and recall things from their theory-based training when they get placed in the field. They have a little bit more comfortability around what's going on around them. But that course content is going to be continuously improved. And we're gonna include things like leadership training as we develop courses around that by getting industry experts on that and other types of training for estimators, for salespeople, that you can then go ahead and assign these people these courses and you can create some sort of incentive around them completing these courses, as well as giving them a visual on targets that they can hit to be able to achieve those incentives or to be able to level up in the company. And all of that will be customized to your business. It'll be a very customized process to be able to create a company structure, so to speak, that when an employee comes into your business, they know what their career path could look like based on what branch that they want to pursue, whether that's furthering their office budgeting uh, salesperson role, or whether that's remaining in the field and getting into say a project manager role more so. That's actually one thing that I'm most excited about in developing the software and where we can go with this beyond just knowing your numbers with your closing rates, your demographics, and to be able to automate certain processes from those numbers, but to also create a a business structure that makes a lot of sense to not only you as a business owner but also your employees and of course we're going to be continuously improving on things such as uh, QuickBooks integration will be coming out very shortly that's one of our priorities as well having a client portal we will continuously be evolving this software right off the bat uh, I hope before the beginning of the season starts for at least us in northern areas we are going to be rolling out timesheets time tracking and hopefully the app 
so that we can have that right on season start. I know a lot of people are working year round as well as a lot of people are actually working in the weather that we've actually got throughout this winter. But that is a priority as well as QuickBooks integration to get that out as soon as possible with this software. But in terms of onboarding, it is a process to be able to input your data. So that will take some time as well. And we hope to make that as easy as possible in the onboarding process with this. And then just to get into why you may choose the How to Hardscape Headquarters software. First and foremost, I see this software extremely benefiting one crew businesses, two crew businesses, and possibly three crew businesses. Any more than that, you're probably looking at another software for now, but if you are especially a one crew business and are looking for software to grow into, when you sign up for the software at members.howtohardscape.com, you are locking in your pricing. So as we roll out more features, the pricing will increase per month, but those who have actually signed up for the software for the members only platform. That's what they'll be paying going forward. They've locked in their pricing. So if you're looking for a software that will grow as you grow your business, this is a great solution for that. Or if you aren't already signed up with the software and are okay with waiting for certain features to roll out, this could be a good budget friendly software to actually get into for your business. Additionally, uh, I am a hardscape business owner. It, this software has been developed by me. So all of these features not only benefit me, my business, but also any users that come on board. So there's having that experience of having a hardscape business owner at the helm of the software being very vital to the development of it as well as you have complete access to me throughout this. We will have monthly calls, uh, group calls to be able to go over any problems that we have. This is beyond the onboarding process, as well as any feature development that you want to see. Having me as the owner of the software and having direct access to me means that I can put things into the feature list to be developed as soon as possible. If enough people are wanting to see that, there's the software is not owned by anybody else. We don't have any other investors, so we're not going to anybody to be able to see if this is possible to do. I am able to put those features that you want to see developed uh, that will benefit more and more people into development as soon as possible. So a lot of softwares you may see are very slow with their development in what typically that might be is they're owned by somebody else or they have investors who really are after profit at the end of the day. And if they can just have their tool sit there, have no development going into it, maybe just invest in salespeople to sell the software a lot of these companies can just have this software sit there and make them recurring revenue time in and time out. So a lot of features don't get implemented, which would be easily developed if enough people came forward and wanted them developed. With that being said, a lot of the money that the software pulls in as well as the members only will go right back into creating more features for the software as well as developing more content for users of this software and their employees to continuously level up. So that's my just short pitch there. If you want to see any features that I haven't mentioned be implemented in the software, if you want to reach out to me and see how the software might fit within your business, reach out to me on Instagram at how to hardscape or email contact at how to hardscape.com or any way that you can get in touch with me. I'd love to know what you would want to see if the software, anything that I talked about that may help your business, that you may have more questions about. You can go to members.howtohardscape.com as well and see more features from this software. We've got videos there and you can actually book a demo right on that page. So if any of this interested you, I'd be more than happy to talk to you about it get you set up with the software, lock in your pricing. And I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in to not only this episode, but how to hardscape episodes in general. Uh, it's been an amazing journey for the past four years with how to hardscape and trying to provide as much value as I possibly could for you, the listener, as well as our audience, wherever you may find us. So thank you so much for listening to the how to hardscape podcast. I hope that we can continuously be putting things into development that will continuously improve 
what we've got going on at How to Hardscape for you as Hardscape business owners. And that's just the goal at the end of the day, our sort of North Star with this. So any questions, you know how to reach me. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. If you need bookkeeping, accounting, CFO services, reach out to Cycle CPA. Mention how to hardscape, get $200 off their services there. Cycle underscore CPA on Instagram or cyclecpa.com. And we look forward to meeting with you next week on the How to Hardscape podcast.